Hey there, this is Trisha at Club Scrap with your Shibori card kit tutorial. Um, so we are working on Club Scrap's April collection called Shibori. I've gone ahead and printed my assembly instructions. I've got my accordion pocket file to organize all my parts and pieces and the kit which includes some beautiful ribbons. We've got some gorgeous coconut shell buttons that have been dyed um, indigo and um, some beautiful silver infinity charms plus all of the panels and cards, cut aparts, and envelopes. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing I like to do usually when I'm prepping for my card making extravaganza is trim those cut aparts and then file them according to the map that's included on page one of your instructions. And you'll be happy to know that this month we have a few extra parts and pieces that we'll be using to make some bonus cards. So let's dive right in with this sheet of cut aparts. I'm following the registration marks that are printed on the edges of and in the middle of this document to separate all these art elements. And then just line up that mark, that little hash mark, with the outside edge of the stainless steel blade and slice those into strips. On this last slice, I'm going to be using these like we used to use our quad prints. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this piece of artwork at four inches. And that just takes off this piece, piece which will become a scrap. And then I'll cut it horizontally at five and three quarters and five and one quarter. And this will give me two four by five and a quarter card panels for my bonus card and a scrap. If you're using an accordion pocket file, with four pockets, go ahead and put this one into the fourth pocket for that bonus card set. Okay, now let's take this strip, trim those narrow pieces off first. These two longer pieces go in, the, in pocket C, or your third pocket, or your third pile if you're not using an, uh, an accordion pocket file kit. And then we have um, a happy birthday and wishing you another fabulous year. Both of those go in pocket C. And then the last piece, we're gonna put it in the pocket for the bonus card. Okay, now our next strip, again, following the rule of the smallest piece gets trimmed first. Hope it is as special as, special as you are. Make it awesome and hope things get better soon. All of these go in pocket A. And that last one, enjoy your cake, that goes in your bonus pocket as well if you have a bonus pocket. Okay, now this next piece has a lot of artwork on it. It's very beautiful. And you'll notice these hash marks again account for what I would call a bleed, where the artwork goes right to, directly to the edge of the page. So just make sure you catch all of those hash marks. I'm just gonna cut a little closer there. I love that even though I've been using this trimmer since 2012, I can still cut just the tiniest little bit off of this. And then um, I just want to point out too that you made another scrap. Okay, moving along here, just be really careful. We need to make a rotation at this point. So I'll cut off this little piece, accounting for that bleed. And this I'm going to cut right on the line. And then if you look carefully a little ways down, I'm at six inches right now on my trimmer, there's a hash mark. I'm gonna cut on the seam here. And then I'm at around two inches. The end goal is to create four strips of art um, that will be used, all of them, in, in uh, card set A. And then this piece right here, if you can locate it, is part of our bonus card artwork. And then we have two pieces that need to be separated. Both of them go in pocket C. And then this is also part of our bonus. I believe I ended up just using this. Well, I'll just wait and see. <laughs> bonus. We have a final piece. It looks probably worse than what it really is. So let's go ahead and um, sometimes, you know, if you if you look at the outside edge and you feel like it needs a little cleanup cut, that's totally fine. Or a neaten up cut. Now here, be careful, you have two pieces on the end, so but for your first slice, you're gonna have to go all the way down this way. 
to avoid cutting through artwork. Same here, we have some blocks of artwork here at the bottom, so slide all the way down here. Now we'll rotate, cut off the word joy from the end. And then we have yet another rotation, so now this is vertical. Line up those pieces, and I don't necessarily go all the way to the top. Keep it where I can see it. And these two pieces go in pocket B. Then I miss you in C, Joy, A. So these are all over the place. <laughs> okay, now we have another strip that is set up very much the same. And we'll rotate, cut my strips. These two long narrow ones back into B. Wishing you all the best. C. Happy birthday. A. Now let's cut this rectangle off of the end here. We'll go down the line. Make a rotation. These two darker pieces go in A. These celebrate greatly, sending a smile. Make it simple but significant. Both of those go in, all of it goes in B, and this goes in A, this rectangle with a pattern. That's it for the cut apart. So we do have one other little piece I want you to find that we will trim. Um, and that will be a light blue panel. It currently measures three and a half by six and three quarters. I want you to trim each of these panels vertically, so that's the tall way, at two and three quarters. Now it's going to give us a very narrow strip. It almost seems like you're doing something wrong, but this is the correct thing. So vertically, two and three quarters gives us a very narrow panel, and you'll note that I did this two at a time. Once again, vertically two and three quarter and now I have a whole bunch of panels this is for set A so I'm going to file this in pocket A how about we do a little more filing here um, on the top of my pile I had a bunch of navy blue rectangles those go in pocket B I also have some tall narrow dark or medium blue panels that would be for set A then I have some shorter, more narrow blue panels, that's set C. So I hope you measured those first ones because I would hate to have you have trimmed the wrong ones. Now the rest of these are bases for my cards that need to be scored. So I'm gonna swap my trimmer for my scoreboard. Set A is a little bit of a weird animal. You'll get the hang of it uh, once you see how this works. The card base is six by seven. Very weird card base size, but no worries. We're going to place each of these um, medium blue card bases in our score pal and score it at five inches. Now what you just did is made a five by seven card base with a very narrow flap. Okay, so repeat that vertically. It is six inches on this edge and score it at five. All of his card panels go in pocket A. For the next set, we'll be using the brown bases. These are 11 inches long and we'll sc score horizontally at five and a half. All of these go in pocket B. Next, we're gonna be scoring the, our final card panels. They're white and they measure seven by six and a half. Let's place the panel into the score pal horizontally so the seven inch side is, is up against the edge and we will score this in half at three and a half. And these are the bases for card set C. That concludes our scoring and our trimming and now we're ready to make our cards. We'll take everything out of pocket A and make our first card together. And um, we'll begin with one of those larger uh, medium blue uh, card bases. Uh, light blue, wide and skinny. We also need a dark blue strip that looks like this. One of our decorative panels, the word happy birthday, and then hope it is as special as you are. Plus we'll be using this 
um, silver infinity charm and the light blue ribbon. We'll begin by burying the worm. In other words, the bump of the score, if you consider it to be a worm, it gets buried on the inside of the fold. So let's go ahead and score that. It makes this tiny, tiny little flap. And you'll notice that the size of that flap corresponds with the size of this panel that we made earlier. So let's attach that with your favorite adhesive. I'm using my ATG. Just center that right over that flap. Now let's take this other light blue panel and center it onto the corresponding medium blue panel. Okay, these two pieces end up forming the entire front panel of our card and they're connected by this decorative strip. So one of the things that I liked about this structure is that the decorative strip looks sort of recessed and to do that, we're going to be using um, our awesome little foam adhesive circles. If you have another favorite adhesive, that's fine. Um, but these these circles create dimension. But I also love that they come with these little pull tabs on them, so they're a lot easier to take off of the backing. I'm going to take these, and I'll put uh, four of them on the long outside edges of this decorative strip. So I have four lined up on this side. I'll do the same on the other edge. The reason I'm cutting in, them in half is I can get twice as much mileage out of it. And um, I don't want them to get too far out into the area because we will attach this behind this narrow flap and then the other panel on the other end of it. So it looks like the front of the card is is dimensional and then this decorative strip is then recessed. It's just sort of a, a unique way to assemble the front flap of a card. Then grab those handy little pull tabs and remove the backing from the two-sided foam adhesive. Make sure that you're level and that you're covering all the foam before you press down that skinny little flap. Then remove the backing from the other set of foam circles on the other side and attach the remaining portion of the panel. You want to make sure that the edge of the panel lines up with the edge of the card and all you need to do is drop it in place. Lovely. Now to finish this up I'm going to be adding this silver infinity charm and I want to show you how I did it. It's pretty easy and you just need one piece of ribbon. So basically, I threaded the ribbon through one end of the charm. And then I took the tail of the ribbon, brought it around the back of the cut apart that I want to attach it to, and looped it on the other end. So now the ribbon is kind of pulling from both sides. So you didn't even need to attach the charm with anything other than this ribbon. Bring the ends around to the back, trim the ribbon, and then just tape the ribbon ends to the back. Very easy. And it looks great too. Happy birthday. Nice. Okay, now I want to attach this so that this is kind of in the recessed area, but attached to the right flap of the card. So I'm just gonna put adhesive on the right side of this cut apart and attach it right about there. So it just kind of looks like it's dimensional, but it's coming from this recessed panel. On the inside of the card base, we will add, hope it is as special as you are. And that completes our first card. You repeat the same assembly process for the remaining cards. The only thing that will vary is the type of art on each card. Okay, for this next one, I'm using the brown card bases, which are going to be a vertical card or a vertical fold and we'll bury the worm. And on the outside of this panel, it just nests very easily. But before you attach anything, uh, we have a little step we need to perform. An optional step at this point, and I didn't do this on my original samples that you would see in your printed instructions, but I, you could, and it would look kind of sweet, round the panels, around the edges, the corners of your panel. 
Um, let's go with this piece of artwork that says thinking of you. We're going to do the same thing with our, I'm using a corner chomper, you could also use a corner rounder punch, and I'm using the small quarter inch setting um, to create these nice rounded corners. Now what you see here are, is the word is thinking of you, and then you have a gutter, you have an art panel, and you have another little gutter. So all you do is line up the middle of this space between thinking of you and the panel to the left with the left edge of your navy blue panel and wrap it around. Then when you do that, this will be in the perfect spot to wrap around on the other side and it won't meet it won't meet. It's intentional, okay? <laughs> At this point, you can take your adhesive and attach all of this to your dark blue card panel. Okay, so that's kind of sweet. To finish off this card, I think this is on here a little bit crooked. I didn't use my ruler, which I should have. Okay, now at the ready here, I've got cork board, some needle, a needle with some um, wax linen and thread attached to it, and a paper piercing tool. Next I'll take one of my buttons, keeping in mind, it's totally up to you which one you use, there are two larger and two smaller buttons. So let's take the large one, and I'm going to make it look like this has been sewn on here. So I'll just position the button kind of in the center, and enter the button and then the pierced hole with my needle and wax linen thread and and just to, to note that this thread is not included in your page or in your card kit you'll have to grab something from your stash for this stuff if you want to add to this element mm. so now I have the tails of thread which I will then tie in a knot and then a sweet little bow And once you get the bow made, then you can pull the the uh, the ears, <laughs> not what you want, the loops, until they're nice and tiny, and then tighten them up, and just trim the ends. And that is just so super cute. Um, with your adhesive, then come through and nest this onto your folded card base, making sure that the fold is at the top. The Thinking of You card has an inner greeting that says, sending a smile. So we'll just go ahead and attach that to the inside and call it good. And move on to set C. All right, there are two different types of cards here. They're, they're both essentially the same for set C. We'll begin by taking our white card base that we've scored and fold it in half. This one is so wonderfully easy, but I do want to remind you of um, the handiness of the Club Scrap Grid Ruler when you're attaching a panel where you want the reveal on the left, top, and right edges to be completely the same. You'll want to use the zero center of your grid ruler. So when I do that, it looks like my center has my ruler reading out at one and five eighths from each edge. But the distance from the left edge of my cut apart, when it's sitting here at one inch on either side, my reveal is five eighths of an inch. I want to match that from the top as well. So when my ruler is placed like this and my piece is centered there, the distance from, from the cut apart to the left edge, right edge, and top edge is exactly the same. Now that I've verified that, I can take my adhesive and just double check to make sure everything's aligned at 5 eighths of an inch. And if I center this, drop it down, it's perfectly placed. Then, with my ribbon, I will just, it's been in the bag so it's a little bit uh, crumpled, but I can still identify that the ribbon wants to fold its way around this way. This is so super easy and make a very, very simple knot. Trim the tails. If you want, you can fold the ribbon in half to get that V. Sweet little V cut in there. That's up to you. You could just cut it at an angle as well. That's nice. 
Okay, then the Hall Works will be attached to your white card base. And I love the sentiment on this card. It reads, if you can read the last words on this birthday card, then you are not that old yet. <laughs> and then for the inside, we're going to say, happy birthday. For the other um, two cards, so you'll make a second one similar to this, but just different artwork. For the, let's take our one of our panels. We'll actually do two of them. Two of the panels will be trimmed horizontally at four and a half and two and a half. Four and a half and two and a half. The other two panels remain large. That will give us three panels for each card, a large, a medium, and a small. You will notice that the medium panel fits this uh, piece that says wishing you all the best. Why don't we go ahead and nest that on there so we're not tempted to use it in the outside of the card. And this will then go on the inside of the card, which is really cool. Then this is, this is also incredibly easy. Fold our card base in half. There is no key to happiness. The door is always open. Watch this. If we put the small panel on the bottom, then this, the large panel at the top, everything fits onto this card perfectly. For embellishment, I'm going to attach the one of the remaining two uh, silver infinity charms the same exact way I did on the other cut apart when I showed you how to loop up those ends. I can't believe how perfect this ribbon is for the task at hand. Love it. Okay, so then it just kind of stretches across. Bring the end around to the back, cut the tail, and tape it. Then simply attach this to the bottom. If you want, you can use your ruler to make sure it's level. There you go. That is a great sample of the part two of set C, and that leaves us with our bonus cards. We have several pieces of paper left from our card parts that will allow us to make two extra bonus cards, and I want to show you how you can do that. Now at Club Scrap, we have a new item available. It's a 10-pack of 80-pound super smooth stock, and this we started to carry for those of you who are, are using our awesome digital hybrid uh, materials and um, a 10 pack of this when you print onto this paper it just the results are absolutely beautiful um, the grain direction of this paper is also set up so that if you cut it in half uh, you know horizontally it will give you two card bases that fold uh, with the grain going in the, in the correct direction and I've gone ahead and done that so here are my two halves um, of that beautiful 80 pound cover weight um, super smooth stock and if I just fold it in half, even without scoring, it gives me a nice fold. However, your best fold will always occur if you do score in advance. Okay, and now I've got um, some strips here and I've got these panels. So I think a, a great place to start will be to um, take these panels that we trimmed earlier to four by five and a quarter and I will adhere them to my folded card bases. It's just a very, very simple card structure. Next I have these two strips and I'm going to grab my trimmer and get these trimmed to a size that will work for my two card bases. The extra long strip currently is 11 inches long. I'm going to trim this at 10 and a half and 5 and a quarter. That will give me two pieces, uh, one for each card. I've also ahead of time trimmed some nesting panels to create contrast between the border strip and uh, the card uh, panel behind it. Um, this panel I believe measures one and a half. Let me just confirm. Yes, one and a half by five and a quarter. So I have two of those to go with these two strips. Now this other piece, I'm going to be using it um, horizontally across the top of the card, which is only going to be four inches wide. So I'll go ahead and trim this also horizontally at four inches. All right, that done, let's begin with our 
uh, triangular pattern that we have here and I'll put some adhesive on this strip and run it horizontally across the top edge of the card. Then we'll take one of our border strips here and nest it onto the white panel I trimmed earlier. Again, it's one and a half by five and a quarter. And we can adhere this vertically onto the card. If you happen to have your grid ruler, uh, again, I love this small size for card making. This is the two by eight. And that will help me adhere this to the panel so that it's not tipping to the side. On this, the other sample in my instructions that you'll have, I use sending a smile. So these got swapped around in my usage, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. It's very sweet sentiment regardless. Now, I just want now remember, if you happen to have some ribbon scraps handy, you can use those to, to decorate this card. When I made my cards, um, I used pretty much all of the ribbon that was included in the kit. So I had to grab some extra spare. You can also grab washi tape, whatever you want to decorate these bonus cards. For the second one, we will once again nest our decorative border strip onto the white plain strip that I cut earlier. This time I'm going to work with it horizontally. And, oh, I gotta grab my ruler. I just can't do it without it. I don't want to. <laughs> and then, here I have another little sentiment that also does not match the one that I used on the card, so it's okay. Uh, we'll just use the enjoy your cake on this one. It's just a matter of personal preference. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Oops. See, now that one I crooked. There we go. Two darling bonus cards, and all you had to provide was the paper. All right, so that is the Shibori card kit. I hope you enjoyed your tutorial. Hope you learned a few things today, and I'll see you next time.